Electroplay 101 by Cosmic One for Lamb Lockdown, April 2020. Just to give you a quick overview of the presentation, I'm going to be talking about the definition of Electroplay, some of the essential health and safety, a quick discussion about safe environments and why it's important, an introduction to the types of toys, an introduction to the types of play, quick overview of the electrode positioning, although I suspect I'm going to be covering this in a future presentation, a quick summary of the presentation, some further reading, and some additional resources that I would recommend to go along with this presentation. At the end of the day, electro play is the use of electricity for pleasure or pain as part of SM play. This may include TENS, E-STIM, Stereo STEM, EMS, High Frequency Galvanic Generators, Violet Wands, Violet Rays, any device that produces electricity that you are playing with. It's absolutely essential to understand that this is a form of edge play and that there are greater dangers associated with it than, for example, spanking or light impact play. It forms part of the spectrum of behavior that is that is encompassed by the acronym BDSM, bondage and discipline stroke dominance, and submission stroke sadism and masochism. It's where the fun is at the end of the day, whether that's in these dystopian times or at a, a more pleasant and green pasture. It's very important with this form of play that you don't engage with it without checking at least the basic health and safety information. Um, at the end of the day, if someone doesn't take a few seconds to ask these questions, then they cannot be considered someone that is a trusted player to play with. In particular, in this area, people who have had issues with their heart, people who have implanted medical devices, be that pacemakers, pumps, um, or to some extent even plates you need to be aware of, if someone has a nervous condition, or if they have a fear or phobia such as electrophobia that applies. Generally speaking, apart from the plates, which you can proceed with caution, it's a general no. If anyone has a problem with their heart, um, they may have played with ones before, but to be perfectly frank, you don't want to be carrying that risk that on this particular occasion there is going to be an issue. Well, what could go wrong? And why is it so important to pre-mortem as part of your risk, ma risk mitigation strategy? At the end of the day, there are a number of hazards involved in this area of play. Um, we're dealing with glass. If that breaks, that creates a sharp hazard. Okay, These are important things to consider that not a lot of people will initially do. Obviously, heart attack can be more than a little fatal, um, but if you're not aware of um, the early signs and symptoms of someone in cardiac distress, then how do you know to respond? Um, electro burns. At the end of the day, when you're applying high voltage electricity to someone's skin, you can damage the surface of the skin. Even if that heals and becomes immediate, or visually indistinguishable from other parts of the body, the damage has been done. Um, I often use as a prime example someone who many years ago was into electro play and humiliation. They asked someone to brand or temporary brand across their chest the word slut. And they didn't realize that years later when they uh, were lying on the beach sunbathing that that skin was permanently damaged. And as a result, as they tanned, it tanned at a different rate, and every time they tanned, they had the word slut written across their chest. Um, people can have panic attacks, either because of the intensity of play, or equally, through the intensity of sexual experience, um, peak of orgasm, etc. Um, if you haven't experienced it, that point where someone literally has a panic attack because they're being overstimulated and then passes out, this is what le petit mort, or the small death, is. Um, it's that overstimulation, that panic, that response, 
um, the brain becoming overloaded and the person passing out. Um, if the person is asthmatic and you're playing with high voltage electricity, there can be some ozone production. Ozone is a very good trigger for asthma. So if you're not aware that the person has a history of asthma, um, then all of a sudden the scene can get cut very short. Um, excessive electricity bills, if this is an area that you really do enjoy, please understand you are running some pretty power hungry devices. Uh, at the end of the day, that is going to take a toll on your domestic electricity bill. And equally, if you are delivering 30, 40, 60, 80 uh, forced orgasms to a person, they are going to strain their voice. They may potentially lose their voice if they have an important business meeting the next day or they've got to be on Zoom with their boss. Um, please bear that in mind. Okay, so what do I talk about when I think of safe environments? Well, particularly with people who are new to this kind of play, it has to be safe, clean and well-lit locations. When you're picking up and, and developing new skills, fumbling around in the dark isn't the thing that's going to help you. You need to be in the cleanest, easiest location. You also want to be somewhere where you're unlikely to be intruded upon. Um, if you are playing in a public setting, uh, pick a quiet corner of the room rather than playing in a corridor. Because if you are holding the wand and doing secondary contact work and the sparks are coming out of the tips of your finger and someone brushes past you, they are going to get a shock, they are going to be shocked, and they may want to interrupt what you're doing to say, what on earth are you playing at? It's kind of one of those that quite often there is a sharing of fault in those situations and the answer is be more cautious about the area that you're playing with. Also be cautious about the contact with metal, either obvious metal, someone sitting on a metal chair on a, a piece of metal tic-tac flooring, or the less than obvious metal that may be hidden under fabrics, etc. At the end of the day, if you're playing and you come into contact with this, it will change the sensation um, and it will rapidly go from something that they may find pleasurable to something they find quite disturbing and unpleasant. There is also a risk of tripping fuses. Um, I've lost count of the number of times I've been out in the club and someone's got out an antique violet wand, plugged it in, and all of a sudden the club is plunged into silence and pitch black. If you're going to be plugging something in that you're not too sure about, please have a word with the promoter, make sure that they are aware that the fuse box may be about to be tripped and therefore someone can stand by it to reset it if there is an issue. They don't want to all of a sudden have to go traipsing through the club to find the fuse box in the first place and then stumbling through clearing all of the rubbish out of the way to gain access to it. A little bit of pre-planning is makes the evening a lot more smooth for everyone and you don't get known as the person who blew the, club, the, the fuse in that club that night. Obviously water and electricity don't mix so you need to make sure that there are no immediate fluid hazards or that people aren't going to uh, place a drink right next to where you're playing and someone may tip that over. Is the table that you're using to hold your kit stable? Um, and are you making sure that no one places any fluids down around it? Um, is there good airflow around the area? Particularly when you're playing with wands, stale air um, means that there will also be a build-up of ozone. So a little bit of air movement can just keep things fresh and clean um, and make sure that it doesn't build up to a threshold where it could cause a reaction to someone. Um, I have to be very careful about some of this activity of the summer months, particularly since uh, if my flat windows are open, my neighbours having a barbecue downstairs can very much hear what goes on. Um, you don't necessarily want to be disturbing them too much. And also think you need to clean the area and the toys before and after use. At the end of the day, um, that's out of respect to the person you're playing with and your kit. If it's a club and environment, it may be awesomely atmospheric, 
but is it necessarily the correct and appropriate place to be playing? So, we're now going to get on to the fun part, to talk about the toys themselves. Broadly speaking, they fall into three categories. High voltage, this would be most commonly thought of as violet wands. Current bearing, the TENS or STIM technology, and what I will group together as shock value. Some of which can be amusing, some of which you don't really want to be caught with in the street because the law will classify them not as a toy, but as an offensive weapon. At the end of the day, you can pick up items for as little as a couple of pounds, right the way through to multiples of thousands of pounds for the specialist electrodes. At the end of the day, these aren't items that they produce two million of them in a factory in the Far East and they're shipped out all over the world. They are bespoke small production line items and therefore they do come at a premium. So, high voltage. Violet wands, they can either be antique medical instruments because at the end of the day um, some bright quack decided that this newfangled electricity had to be good for us, so they put together an instrument to deliver its, its healing properties direct to the patient. And they used to travel around plugging this in in your home and offering to treat you. Thankfully, nowadays we have an NHS, and in fact, particularly in these times, we are really truly grateful that we have an NHS who are coordinated and such quackery doesn't actually come into play. Unfortunately, America doesn't have an NHS and they have a president who's prepared to make some very serious and silly recommendations in terms of things that people can do medically. So Thursday nights, please step outside and give a good clap for our carers. Um, there are also modern instruments. Um, some of them were designed with specific production um, testing environments. So if you want to test for the thickness of a plastic coating on the inside of a metal uh, fuel tank, um, you might use this kind of spark generator, um, spark gap detector. Um, that some of you may recognize as a re repurposed for playing with as wands. Equally, there are some very modern but lower power devices developed within the beautician sector because there is still this belief that applying high voltage electricity to your skin is good for you. Also within the realms of high voltage, we have Tesla coils, we have Van de Graaff generators. These aren't generally the items that you will see being played with uh, in clubs or out and about, primarily because a good Tesla coil requires at least five meters of uninsulated material around it, otherwise it's extremely dangerous to use. If you want to see a good example of what it's like to play with a Tesla coil, look up the great Voltini on YouTube, who's been on television and, and tours the, uh, the festival circuit with this particular show. Quite impressive, but not the kind of thing you can really play with at home, primarily because you don't have 15 foot ceiling heights. Well, what kind of sensations can you generate with a wand? It can be anything from a mild tingling sensation, almost as if it's ants crawling across your skin, to a deep cutting sensation that someone is cleaving the flesh off the bone. Most people will refer to it as a tattoo-like sensation. Um, it will release endorphins. Um, it can have exactly the same drifting effect of a tattoo, but without the permanent mark or, or artwork left behind. It can also leave the skin very, very sensitive, so it's a great uh, warm-up to other forms of play. As a general rule, it's important to understand that the greater the surface area that you come into contact with, whether that's the size of glass area on the electrode or the amount of skin you make contact with, the less harsh the sensation is going to be. So you want to start off with the larger electrodes working down towards the smaller ones as opposed to the other way around. When you're playing, 
if you start off low and work your way up in terms of settings, you will naturally have a longer play session. One of the common complaints I often get is that people will demonstrate a wand along the lines of, here it is on power level three, isn't that nice? Yes, it's nice, I like it. And then over the next 30 to 45 seconds, they've cranked it up to a level 10 and the enjoyment has rapidly gone out of the window and the person who's controlling the box has lost um, that connection. They haven't seen that you're no longer enjoying it because they're getting their rocks off because they're playing with a wand at level 10 and the session ends very, very quickly. Very important to understand that with, particularly with the antique instruments, um, they weren't designed to be run for long periods of time. So 20 minutes to 30 minutes is probably the longest you should run them um, because the coil in the handle is basically wax wrapped around a thin metal sheet. As that gets hot, it will melt the wax and it will break down that capacitor. Once it's gone, it's gone. Um, that's why it's quite important if you really do enjoy wands that you have multiples or that your restoration is what's called a solid state restoration so that the components inside aren't the same um, wax layered material that can't be run for too long. Um, it's also important to think about this in terms of the senses that it is a sight, a sound and a smell you can integrate all of those factors in together when you're playing and it kind of creates a mad professor effect where you can take advantage of all of those aspects rolling a scenario together um, dr frankenstein as opposed to uh, our wonderful lovely um, ethical medical professionals there are different types of electrodes whether that's glass um, and specially designed and specially blown, filled with um, inert gases such as neon, argon. Uh, a few of the more unusual ones were made with radioactive gases such as radon, although I wouldn't recommend playing with those. Obviously, any metal item is conductive, and there are also a number of conductive materials um, such as some of the metallic filaments in tinsel, uh, materials known as mylars, uh, carbon fibre increasingly is becoming an accessible material. Um, and these are all things that can either be repurposed or a number of stalls are already specifically making in those materials. Well, now to move on to the current bearing or TENS type technology. Um, TENS units can be purchased from Boots, eBay, High Streets. There are some specialist kits that are repackaged for kink. But at the end of the day, if you're starting out, a very basic, simple £10 TENS unit is often enough to at least get you started. Um, yes, it won't have the same range of sensations. It won't have the same power delivery, um, but it's a good starting place. And then the STIM packages that are specifically designed, such as eSTIM Systems, PES, uh, Eros Tech, Electro STIM, um, they range in, in functionality and models, um, and again, they range in price as well. I saw one recently, the supplier was looking at £1,400 for it, but it was designed to be a very authentic looking um, interrogation instrument um, the kind of thing that you would expect to see in uh, Guantanamo Bay or some secret uh, underground facility for extracting information out of people. And equally the final group is the stereo stims. These tend to be DIY type circuit boards that people will put together um, quite often using a small little amplifier as well and as a community they tend not to be seen out and about in public because quite frankly if you have the ability and skills and technology to wire yourself up and have the most mind-bending orgasms d 
do you necessarily want to come out in public? Because you've got everything you want pre-locked down at home. I suppose the only thing they had to battle for was for a supply of pasta and toilet paper. Everything else they needed was already in-house. Um, I've also listed another red group, which is the infamous Hollywood Relaxercizer, which was the instrument that enabled Jackie Chan to have his awesome six-pack for the Kung Fu films. Um, at the end of the day, anything that plugs directly into the mains is considered extremely risky unless the supplier has specifically addressed the concerns and issues as to how to isolate the person from mains voltage should a failure occur. Um, there really is only one of the suppliers on the list above, which is Eros Tech, who've worked that one out. Um, outside of that, um, most of these are either battery powered devices or have a rechargeable battery to avoid that direct mains connection. Well, what do current bearing electrodes look like? And there are multiple different types and categories. Uh, a monopolar electrode, well these need to be attached in pairs, it's a positive and, extra, uh, positive and negative, an in and an out for want of a better word. The bipolar electrodes are the self-contained ones that contain both. So if we look across the screen here, a sticky pad is a monopolar electrode. The samurai that I'm holding in the middle shot has an electrode on either side. And more recently, we have started to see monopolar electrodes. And this is an anal plug that has four different electrodes to enable you to run it with two boxes simultaneously or one box producing a signal to all four of those electrodes. Of the shock value and shock and novelty items, um, I can only really recommend the fly swats and some simple uh, shock and novelty lighters. The other items from shock collars to cattle prods to tasers, electric fences, field generators, dynamos, you can run the risk of these being considered to be offensive weapons. They can be classified at the same level as a shotgun. If they are in the bottom of your bag, that means that you have left the house concealing an offensive weapon and if the police are looking for a good excuse to get you you've just provided them with an an, an easy win that they can um, they can take you down for so be very very careful um, unfortunately I do know a couple of people who spent a little bit of time behind bars for something that was considered a novelty toy but because it produced a spark the CPS were able to claim that it was an offensive weapon and they spent a significant amount of time at Her Majesty's pleasure as a result. Well, what are the types of play that we can engage in? Um, obviously electricity is a sensation so the first area is going to be sensation play and because of its medical background medical scenes seem to be appropriate certainly if you're doing internal play then internal and medical go nicely together uh, particularly if you have a, a setup with a swing or uh, somewhere to put someone into stirrups electricity can be great in a predicament situation either someone moves and they complete a circuit I've seen people build systems where if someone steps across a laser line, it completes a circuit and sends an electric shock through to a person. Um, very popular, lots of people will chase this one, electrosex. The idea that the electrical connection is made through our genitalia um, is one that a lot of people will be looking for. Um, in most cases, that does require people being in a fluid-bound relationship because you can't use condoms in these kind of scenarios. Um, Electro-torture. Um, yes, it is considered a legitimate fear in many people. It's a very strong sensation if you want to extract information out of people. Um, it's no great surprise that there are lots of films you can think of where there are a... Uh, there's a car battery, um, a couple of crocodile clips, and quite often a metal frame bed involved. 
um, we can set up remote controls. Um, a way of giving a signal to a person by applying electrical shock to them um, or to get them to move in a particular direction or stop etc based on the stimuli because some of the the technology that's out there integrates with remote control um, fear scenarios at the end of the day most people know a cattle prod a taser a stun device is going to be very unpleasant um, if you don't do this you get this um, it's a, a very short cycle between people understanding that and modifying their behavior. Um, electric knives. No, I don't mean the kind of thing that you may have just used to carve the Sunday roast. I mean using metal blades or carbon fiber blades to create a very fine contact point um, and a very sharp sensation. Um, Quite literally, um, I've had people come to see me because maybe they have a past of seeking a very strong sensation such as cutting. Um, they don't wish to cut for a multitude of reasons. Well, you can set up to create that sensation of cutting without leaving any permanent damage. Um, enhancing sensitivity. Um, many years ago when I first had... a uh, my internal violet wand electrode. I took it to a club, someone came along, liked the look of it, tried it. it wasn't particularly their cup of tea, but they went on to a gangbang party later, um, saw me a couple of months later and were raving about the fact that I'd left their private parts in a very heightened sensitivity and the next 15 to 20 occupants at the, uh, at the gangbang um, had given her exactly the stimulation that she was looking for. And equally, um, if you wire blokes up and you apply uh, direct stimulation to the prostate, you can literally create an electro-milking scenario where they will just continually orgasm um, until the fluid is, is completely drained. Um, we can use electrode positioning to directly stimulate people's muscles, um, that can lead on to forced orgasms on both genders quite easily if you understand where to place the electrodes. Um, rather than an orgasm being something that is generated in the mind in combination with the stimulation of the nerves, this is something that works almost the other way around. There is so much stimulation to the nerves and muscles that it feeds the stimulation going hey you need to have an orgasm now because this is happening whether you're ready for it or not um, and quite literally people who feel they have an, an amazing ability to control their orgasm and they 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 are the master of their own destiny can be somewhat unnerved and surprised when in fact the correct placement of electrodes means that their controlling role is rapidly diminished Equally, the stimulation of nerves is different to muscles. I know some people who love nerve stimulation but cannot stand the sensation of muscle stimulation. There are different technologies out there. The nerve stimulation stuff is a little bit harder to access and you're looking at the prof's black box for that kind of stuff. Equally, if you're very interested in conditioning and developing behavioral patterns, um, have a look at the Pavlock technology, where there are a number of modules that you can either self-control and self-discipline, or you can interact with another person who can set those levels of shock um, and electro-stimulation um, based on the behavior that you're looking to modify. So, for example, if you want to give up smoking, it can detect the action of you smoking and will shock you as a result of that. Um, quite an interesting technology. A um, couple of illustrations of the types of play. Um, as you see in one picture, I am enhancing the sensitivity. I'm using um, a visual effect with the wand in another, almost like a lightsaber. I've strategically placed some small electrodes in another, and 
I'm kind of using that that mad professorial um, visual effect of the violet wand in the other. To look at that more anatomically, um, as you can see from this cutaway diagram, there are a multitude of potential placements for electrodes with female physiology. Um, this really is the kind of thing that I could spend a good 45 minutes talking about alone, so I may actually do a second workshop about this, uh, particularly because the male physiology is equally complex in terms of where electrodes can be placed, where electrodes can be paired. Um, to give you an illustration, I was once asked to demonstrate um, a technique known as hot dogging, which is where you place an electrode in position 3 and 5, stimulate the shaft of the penis. It literally creates this rock-hard um, member that's quite impressive um, because I don't particularly like the sensation myself. The moment I turned the power off, went straight back to a very relaxed state. Um, and that's just to, again, reinforce the fact that quite often with the direct uh, muscle stimulation, the owner of the muscle has very little control over that. So, give you a bit of a summary at this particular stage. Pre-mortem, this is a dangerous edge play area if you don't take the steps to understand and plan what you're doing, you are going to run into problems. Stick to a budget. If you're not careful, you will get carried away and spend far too much money. Um, luckily, at one stage, I used to work for an investment bank, so I had all the money to throw at these things that I wanted. When I no longer did, I had to control my behavior a lot more. Um, equally, start with the basics and work up, um, because if you make a small investment, you can always upscale your techniques and expand into an area. What you don't want to be is one of those person who has all of the kit and none of the idea or none of the technique. Um, brush up with your physics and understand how things work. Um, I once had a chuckle. I went to a munch north of London one year and a mistress came up to me and said, Oh, I've been doing this electro stim stuff, but it's absolutely useless. It never seems to work with my clients. I said, OK, what are you doing? And she explained the, the basic package that she had and the electro she was using. And I asked her to talk me through the process. And it became very clear when she said, and I wire up the electrode, I pop a condom in on it, and then I stick it inside the person. And didn't realize that the condom was the thing that was breaking the circuit, was causing it to, to be fully insulated, and that's why it never worked. Um, in this particular case, um, wasn't the right technique and the right play area for her to get involved in, because those electrodes are very personal items. Um, if you're going to be operating as a commercial service, then people might need to be bringing their own electrodes. Um, equally, understanding anatomy. There has been an excellent workshop as part of the lockdown series. Um, from one of the earlier lambs, I would recommend that you spend 45 minutes working through that. Um, learn first aid, if for no other reason than the hope that you don't need to use it, but if you do need to use it, you're not one of those people who's desperately trying to Google what to do while it needs to be done. OK, if you are prepared in advance, then you are capable of calmly taking the steps that are required to minimize the damage of a situation. And equally, if you get into the habit of thinking, thinking and then taking action, then you'll be double checking yourself you won't inadvertently turn round and bump a glass electrode into a solid surface because you will have checked before you took the action um, by looking twice. Some further reading, uh, one of the few books on the subject, Juice by Uncle Abdul. Um, it's a short read, it's quite good, it's notoriously not 100% accurate. What you will often find with the electro players is 
um, because there is no real hard and fast academic go-to answer. Um, you tend to get a lot of very strong opinions um, and some very strong personalities that go with that. Um, a couple of friends of mine who've done live workshops will um, mention well-known individuals who will come in and uh, attempt to derail conversations because they believe they should be the king of electrics. Well, the sad news here is, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't the Tiger King. There's no Netflix mini-series for being the one who who's more out there than the rest. Okay? Um, notoriety comes through making mistakes, so don't make them. There are a number of news groups out there, or at least there were for a while, um, via the Yahoo platform. There are a number of workshops or a number of groups on FetLife. There is an Electroplay Primer in the educational section of the LAM website. I've also put that up online as writings as well. As Phil will have said in part of the, uh, the orientation for the newbies, um, our stalls are some of the best people and resources that you can talk to. If you're looking for vintage restored ones, um, Nick and Morphia ones in the sub-basement at London are awesome. If you're looking for a modern wand or some modern electrodes, uh, usually metal, um, then you want to be looking at the trust stall on the ground floor. And if you're up in Manchester and you're looking for a vintage restored wand and some very unique electrodes, then you want to be looking at the stock of Electrowolf. Now at this stage I'll probably be jumping into the live chat um, to see if there are any specific questions. Um, but I hope this has been a good presentation for you. I hope you have um, been staying at home, been keeping well, and that uh, these troubling times haven't been impacting you too, too greatly. Catch up with you in the uh, workshop.